every sort of year or two, I'll do something different and grow and improve what I do and, uh, and expand. And um, this year in 2021, 2022, I have uh, built my newest venture, which is the Birch Hotel Group. And a lot of people are asking me questions about, you know, Birch, should I be buying a motel? Um, can I buy a motel? What's the best way to buy a motel, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And uh, yeah, I've got lots of questions here about it, and I wanted to talk a little bit about why I got into the motel business, um, the pros and cons of it, what I've learned over the last twelve months. Um, is it worthwhile? Um, and all different things in between. So. Um, I, I guess probably the first question is, why do I buy motels for and hotels? Uh, when I first um, started in the motels, it was actually literally a year ago, um, I had realized that I'd be buying properties for my investors in areas like Gladstone and Chinchilla. Um, and these are two markets which are sort of um, mining related and I'm anti-mining, right? I don't normally buy in mining towns because um, I've seen so many people blow their fingers off, so many stories of people that bought a property for 500,000, it's worth 100,000, all these horror stories over the years. And I see so much hype of people, you know, doing their ass by being caught up into those sort of uh, transactions. And um, over the last decade, hearing people that have, you know, bought a property, you've seen the Sydney market go up from $500,000 to a million dollars and um, you've seen people that bought a $500,000 property in these areas and it's gone down to $100,000 uh, the other side. So you know, you've got two different outcomes from there. But I'm a value investor, I'm a contrarian investor, I buy shit when it's cheap. And um, yeah, I started buying these properties going back about four or five years ago for my investors, um, which were in areas like Gladstone, Chinchilla. Um, we picked up properties that used to sell for 500,000 for like 50 or $60,000 for a two bedroom unit, a house or whatever the case may be. And um, yeah, I bought hundreds of these properties, uh, you know, in the back end for my investors that were like less than the price of a car. And those properties had gone up from like a hundred, from 50 grand to 100 grand to 150 grand and probably like 200 grand now to get in those sort of markets. And um, it was only about, yeah, probably about 18 months ago that I thought to myself, shit, I really need to go buy, buy myself like 20 or 30 of these properties. I just wasn't in a position. I was doing other deals um, at the time. And I was like, I want to go buy some. And I looked around and I was like, damn, right? Like this is the first time it had ever happened that I had bought properties, but I couldn't go and capture the market myself. So yeah, all my investors got all these properties that had doubled, quadrupled and all that sort of stuff, but I was unable to afford the property. So I started scrambling around a real commercial. I found a few little shops, bought the shops, um, and then I found these motels and I bought uh, two motels back in like 2013, um, which didn't really work out the best for me because I rented them out to um, sort of house commission and sort of, you know, troubled sort of tenants. Um, and it caused a lot of riffraff and uh, it just didn't work out how it should have. Uh, those properties went up. Um, they both do quite well today. Well, one of them is going through a transformation to be a really glitzy, glamorous uh, motel. Um, but yeah, looking at um, at those properties, I thought, shit, they didn't work out the best for me. There was a lot of headaches and all that sort of stuff. Um, if I buy these motels, I found some motels that were cheap in these areas like Chinchilla and Gladstone and that. Um, you know, if I buy these things, are they gonna be a bigger headache for me than what they're worth? So I thought, well, fundamentals is if someone else is running this business, if I can come in from a corporate perspective, I can run these things better. Um, but I thought, you know, this sounds like the worst investment I could ever do. Um, so I went out there and I said, look, I'm gonna try and buy five properties in the motel space in 2021, and uh, we'll see how that goes. And if it blows my fingers off, well, at least I've bought them below the infrastructure costs. Um, I can off-sell them and, and, you know, I've got a plan B, a plan C, a plan D. Worst case, I can just rent them out as, you know, whatever they were um, to housing commission or something like that. But yeah, I went out and I thought, you know, I'll build this strategy um, and see how it goes. And it's working to this point uh, pretty decent, um, pretty decent. And there's a lot of learnings that have come from the last 12 months. So what my probably biggest learnings are is that you're not buying a piece of real estate. So buying a motel shouldn't be for anyone like it will really screw 99% of people up because the people that specialize in motels and buy these things really um, 
you know, that's their, their business, right? They're operating, they're turning sheets, they're doing the room rentals, all that sort of stuff. And if they can't do it, well, then how are you going to be running it from remote? It's not like having a property manager run it. If you've had an onboard management that's running the motel, then, you know, you've got to manage those staff. You need HR, you need fair work, you need all that sort of infrastructure that's behind it. You need a legal department, you need corporate governance, you need, um, you know, processes, procedures, manuals. You know, are you in a different state? Could you be locked down, right? Like I haven't seen probably about 90% of my uh, properties because I've been in Sydney and not in Queensland, for example, and a lot of them are in Queensland. So looking at, um, you know, the differences, if there's a few big differences here, right? So first one is council rates. Council rates on your property like two grand, you could have a house next door to a motel. The house is two grand a year. The motels, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 a year in council rates. I fucking kid you not. Council rates at 20,000, 50,000 a year, insane. But what you've got to think about is you might have 30 toilets there, so they'll charge you 30 times the waste service, 30 times the you know the roads and all that sort of stuff. So council rates massive. Um, you've got to run it. You're not buying a real estate asset. You're buying a real estate asset, but you're running your business from there. So you are now running businesses. You have all the headaches from those businesses. You could have market volatility. You can't go and close down a shop and build a new shop inside that you have a motel. So you must run it as a motel. So your market is very, very condensed and you need to be a very tight operator. Um, if something goes wrong, uh, let's say you've got plumbing, you wanna redo a bathroom, you've now got 40 bathrooms to replace, not one, right? Uh, do you just do one or do you do all 40? Um, if you have to leave it vacant, how long will it, like for example, I'm doing one at the moment, which is I'm hoping it'll be done within six months. Um, and that's me having to go two hours a day, every second day, sorry, for an hour or two, plus an hour and two each way uh, to get there. Meeting trades, the time, energy drain for me, project managing that sort of asset is very uh, time consuming. So yeah, we've got seven, eight, Renault's going at the moment. I've only shown one of them because I can't get to the other six or seven of them. So yeah, there's there's many different things. So I don't advise to anyone. It's not, you know, I'm saying it's the greatest investment in the world, uh, but I have a strategy. I have a vision as to what I'm doing. I'm accumulating all of them, right? So when people come to one, they know that, okay, Birch is gonna give me a, a affordable price. He's gonna give me a nice roof over my head. I'm not actually gonna worry about getting an STD from laying in the bed. Um, it's clean um, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's functional. Um, that's what I'm building here. Uh, some of these places are actually really nice, beautiful properties. Some are resorts, some are little real dingy sort of pubs and they have to, you know, upbring these properties to being a, a good sort of standard. So looking at, um, you know, some of the learnings, I've learned a lot of things this year and I am not deterred by it. Um, if I had it as my core business, I would have gone bankrupt straight away um, and I'm buying these things with cash. So it's the opportunity cost with those funds being held elsewhere doing something else. So you need to weigh in all of these aspects, but I've got a bigger picture for what I'm building. And um, I understand that I have a real estate component of what I do and I have a business component of what I do and I'm building other layers of financial instruments on top of um, this ecosystem. So I'm never really gonna go down into the intricate parts of what I'm building and how I'm building and the stuff, but I'm just giving you an overview as to what I'm buying, what I'm doing with it, and how come I'm doing it. Um, so what do I get when I buy these assets? I'm buying a business, I'm buying a piece of real estate, I'm buying the land, I'm buying the bricks, I'm buying the beds, I'm buying the furniture and the infrastructure. If someone wants to come along and be my competitor in the market, they have to go and do all that shit, which is gonna cost a hell of a lot more money in order to become my competitor. If I get annoyed with it all in the future, I could go and knock these buildings down and rebuild blocks of units. So I could, a lot of these places are key prime pieces of real estate in really nice locations. So if you think about every time you go on a holiday, um, you've got, you know, two acres or an acre of land with this motel on it, which is surrounded by little houses. You can go buy all the little houses around it. I've got the bigger piece of land. So 
I'm looking at it from many, many different perspectives. Um, these things here, a lot of people can't get finance for the property, so it does make it very, very much uh, more complex. So um, I'm just fortunate enough that I'm using my foundation property portfolio to then go and buy these motels and hotels. I think a lot of people, uh, you know, sort of, uh, don't realize that they might go and buy a few houses or whatever, but there needs to be a bigger part. It's just really, for me today, a bit more of a, a game that I'm playing. Um, and yeah, it's mainly a game. Um, looking at what deals, I just noticed here, one of the questions I was gonna talk about um, is one of my best deals. Um, well, I'm very new to this space. A lot of people say to me, oh, Nathan, you know, you buy these properties, you build property portfolios, um, you're very experienced with it. I'm nervous buying my first house. Well, that's because you're vulnerable. You don't know when you're buying a property for the first time, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. You don't know the unknowns. Um, and I guess for the first time in probably 15 years or so, I've actually felt vulnerable on that front because I don't know what I'm doing, right? Um, so I am, you know, venturing into a market that I've never been into beforehand. I'm not a tourism operator. I'm not a hospitality operator. I'm not a, a hotel operator. I'm not a motel operator. I'm not a publican. I've never been in them, but I am all of them now because that's what, you know, I've ventured into it as a business perspective. So as for saying what my best property is right now, um, my cheapest one was $100,000. Uh, my most expensive one is five million dollars so far. Um, I have various different sort of types of assets. Some are resorts. Um, some that I'm looking at, I'm working on around the twenty million dollar mark, um, and hopefully they'll pull off in the in the course of the next sort of six months, sort of thing. So